Hello everyone, what's up? So today's video is going to be a new Mythbuster video. This is going to be very different than what I've been used to doing, but registered is probably going to be a good video. So, what's up everyone? Uh, so you're probably wondering to yourself, where in the heck is the Tranchla Canada video? Well, since this is in HD and still having problems uploading it, I think it's probably a YouTube issue, uh, since they changed their system. Uh, they seem to don't really take well to MP4 MOV files, so I'm trying my hardest to upload it. I've been trying for the past uh, four or five days and just doesn't happen. Uh, it's either failing at 99% uploaded or it's failure to convert. So we'll see. I'm going to try my best to see if I can upload it. If not, then I'm going to have to chuck the HD, probably buy a new one, and record with this 40p uh, camera but you know as I said you know quality of the camera is really not important it's just the information that you take in in the videos that's the quality of the video so today's video as I said we're going to go over uh, tarantula Mythbuster 29 it's very different than usually I do uh, tarantula specific videos but for this episode I'm going to do specifically on handling because a lot of people have requested for me to do one and I thought I should handle one of my tees to show it to you to prove that yes I do handle the tees. Okay, so in this video I'm going to cover three main misconceptions that new tea owners have. First, can you defang a tarantula and remove its venom so that way you can safely handle it? Can teas bite? And the definition between a poison and a venom, or venomous and poisonous. A lot of people seem to use poison instead of venom, and that's becoming my biggest pet peeve of all. So Hopefully with this video I can shed some light on the misconceptions. So, first question is, can you defang and remove its venom? Basically you can defang a tarantula, it's possible, and it's possible to remove the venom by removing its venom glands, but why would you? Because defanging and removing its venom deprives the spider of having a good life. Namely, um, it can eat and it will die a horrible death due to starvation. So what a tarantula eats, as you've seen in many of the feeding videos, and I think I explained it earlier in one of my earlier feeding videos, I think it's 20-something. Um, tarantulas capture their prey with their fangs, and they use the venom from the venom glands to inject the prey with venom, so that way it can be liquefied and they can slurp it up like stew. That's what tarantulas eat, and that's how they eat. So, can teas bite? Oh yes they can, and it does not matter if your tarantula is docile or aggressive. The chances are, of being bitten are much more higher than an aggressive species, like an old world, like um, H. Livinum, uh, H. Minax, OBT, um, let's see what else, uh, Salino Cosmia Crassipeeps. But with new world species, the chances are rare, but they still can occur. So tarantulas can bite, including the most docile, like B. smithy, E. capistratus, avic, avic. It all amounts to being how docile the specimen is. What docile really means is just its tolerability. A uh, highly docile tarantula means that it is highly tolerable. So it won't take, well, it depends on the specimen or individual. They will usually tell you when they had enough. So. In the case of New World species, they do have urticating hairs where they will shake it off to ward off predators. And if they feel if that doesn't work very well, they can either go to a threat posture, as you've seen in many of my videos of my classic uh, peak and series, where they will raise their two front legs and their pedipalps and start to bear the fangs at you. And then if that doesn't work, they will choose to bite. But tarantulas will give you signs before they bite. And sometimes many specimens like Girozea can be very unpredictable and can bite without provocation. So yes, teas can bite, including the most docile. Now, the common question here, poison versus venom. And I colored this one uh, because it's something that people should know. So poison means ingested. 
So, let's say if I go to the woods and I see a nice mushroom here and I decide to eat it. Well, not saying you should do that. I hope you don't do that because that will actually kill you. But if I get sick from eating that mushroom, that means it's poisonous. So, poisonous means something you can eat. And, well, something that you eat and you get sick from it, like food poison. Let's say if you have uh, some fish sticks that uh, have gone bad and you decide to eat them, not knowingly that they have expired and you get sick from that, that's food poisoning and that's poisonous. Tarantulas are not poisonous because there's many countries where they eat them as a delicacy. So, you're pretty safe from eating them. Now, venom means injected. So, let's say if uh, you got stunned by a bumblebee or a wasp or a hornet and they inject you with venom and you get symptoms or get sick because of it, well that's termed venomous. This is true for tarantulas because a tarantula does have venom. So a person has asked me to do a personal uh, a video on this between the old world and new world species. Okay, so venomous, all tarantulas are venomous. So there are classified into two major classes, new world and old world. So new worlds are specifically um, in the American continent, South, North, and Central America. So, example, Nandu Chromatis, Lacedora Parahabana, Theraposa Blondi, Sao Polis, Armenia, B. Smithy, Girozea, Havik Havik. Those are New World tarantulas. So, New World tarantulas have weak venom. They're not very strong. Well, it depends on some of them, especially with uh, Tapnikinius, Theraposa, and Sao Polis, which have a little bit more stronger than average venom, but mainly if you get bitten by a New World tarantula like G. rosea, Avic, Avic, or B. smithy, chances are you're just going to feel like a normal bee sting. I never have been bitten by a tarantula in all my life, in all the 16 years as I care for teas, so I consider myself lucky, but I'm eventually going to get my first bite sooner or later, and I'll document that on YouTube, of course, if I ever do get one. But the venom is very similar to a bee sting. Um, you know, you're going to have some local redness around the bite area, maybe a little bit of pain, but that will go away after a day or two. So it's really nothing serious. Now, old world species, like the uh, H. maculata, S. calciatum, P. regalis, O. V. T. H. lividum, and so forth, have much more stronger venom than most, and this is why I never recommend them for any new tea owner to get, because of their very fast nature and their very potent venom. Why they have potent venom? Because they lack the urticating hairs that New Worlds have, so that way they resort more to biting as a primary defense mechanism. So, the venom strengths will vary between the species, as calcium seems to have the more powerful venom of the old world species next to uh, Selenocosmia crassipeeps and then the H. maculata and the pokies but it's really not a great way to get bitten by one because their bites really do suck. Um, symptoms include intense pain, uh, local swelling, intense swelling, um, you get muscle cramps especially around the legs, um, you feel nauseous, you get hot flashes, did I cover everything? I think I did, yeah. So it's really not a great way to get bitten by those species. So that's what venom and poison means. Alright, so now I'm going to talk about my opinion towards handling. So people will have differing opinions on how or will they recommend handling. A lot of people on internet sites as well as books say that they really don't recommend too often handling tarantulas. And I think that's a great advice to do that. Uh, why? Because tarantulas, for one, um, are simply not intelligent enough in the emotions department. Sure, they're smart in the fact that they are great escapologists and they are avid hunters, but as far as getting to know you is concerned, you can, they just don't have the mental capacity. You can't tame them. Um, I've actually tried to handle uh, my Jeep pull stripes, uh, Charlotte, very often, and then 
One reason later, she decided to become really defensive on me, and right now I just don't handle her anymore. So that's the attitude that usually teas will have. If you handle them too often, some of them will either turn very docile, they can get to know you very well, but it's not very likely, or they can get very defensive from handling too much. So that's why I really don't handle tarantulas too often. Second reason, I just don't want to get bitten. I haven't had any bites yet from any teas, and I plan to keep it that way. And also because tarantulas are very, very fragile creatures. So if you're handling tarantulas, and if it bites you, human instinct is to oof, drop it. And if you drop the tarantula, chances are the abdomen is going to rupture, and that's not a good sign because that's usually fatal. That happens most common with terrestrial species that are very heavily built, like B. smithy um, and G. pulchrypes and G. rosea. Now, borals don't really tend to have uh, rupture abdomens very frequently because of their lighter body than the terrestrials, which are heavy body. So, uh, since their life is driving from tree to tree, usually that doesn't occur and it's much more safer to handle. So, that's my opinion towards handling. Now, I'm going to tell you about certain procedures to handle them. So, uh, we'll get some specimens out and we'll show you how I handle them. Okay, so now some tips on handling procedures. So, what I do is here's your typical tree rosea. Always touch the abdomen with a little paintbrush. Never your hands because who knows what might happen. So just touch the abdomen and see how it reacts. So notice that when you touch the abdomen it went around. That means it's not a good handling tea. Okay. Here's another tarantula I would like to try to handle. See if I can attempt to. Uh, this one here is a Avicularia hurriana, the Ecuadorian woolly pink toe. So all you have to do is just scoot her out. And just be sure to have her ready. Like so. And all you have to do is just screw your back. Oop. That's a nice save, okay? And just make sure that you're not nervous when you're doing this, because if you're nervous and you're shaking, chances are your tarantula is going to react to that, and uh, that's going to be fun. Wow, what a really calm tea. Yeah, that's a really calm avic. My urticans isn't so friendly, but she's going to be a good handling pet. And the last one I'll show you is my uh, Brachypelma Vagans Verdesi. See, if you know your specimen well, you can actually touch her with no problems. This one I'm trying to scoot her out.
And there you go. <laughs> very, very calm specimen. Now, things not to do when you're handling your tarantula is to be nervous, like I said, and never cup your tarantula, because if you're cupping your tarantula, you're giving it reasons to bite you. And why does it not go out? That's a very friendly species. I'm trying to get you back in. There we go, perfect. I'm going to show you the pinch grab method. This is something I don't really recommend handling uh, your tea by, especially picking it up. So I'm going to demonstrate this with uh, Curly Sue, my Brachypalma bopalosum, Curly hair. So the way to grab her is to pinch grab the carapace between the second and third pairs of legs. And you pick it up like that. I think that's just a little blemish there. But as you can see, you have to have a very firm grip to do this and make sure that your tee is not panicking when you're doing that. If you really don't have a strong grip and if your tee is really panicking, chances are that you're going to drop the tarantula thereby killing it. So this is why I really don't recommend the pinch grab method. It's really not a safe way to pick up the tea. The way I showed you is the best way to pick one up. And to demonstrate what a skittish tarantula is, I'll demonstrate this with my B. Melia, the painted red leg. See how she's running a bit? That means this tarantula is uh, skittish and it's really not a great way to handle them. So if a really you have a skittish brachypelma, I would try it the next time and see if uh, it becomes calmer. Usually teas will calm with age. So there we go, that's about it. So I do hope you enjoyed this awesome Mythbusters video about handling teas, the right way and the wrong way to handling teas, as well as my opinion towards handling them and the common misconceptions. So hope you all enjoy it.